nothing but Caleb for a whole week. Radio is dying. What you don't have is a station dedicated to new independent artists. Talk to me. Send me a message. Send me a message. Send me a message. Well, that really came back to bite me in the butt, didn't it? Caleb launched a new station. It's been an entire year since that first video came out, and a lot has happened since then. I ended up on a Zoom call with Carlos and Amy from The Morning Show. I quickly explained to them, though, that I was not an expert by any means and that I appreciated kind of what they were doing, but that I thought that it would be good if there was something dedicated for a different kind of music. About that time is when I got in touch with Steve who does their playlisting and he created a new playlist on Spotify for upcoming artists, new people and independent things. I couldn't believe it. Steve had done it. <laughs> but then Steve tells me that he was in fact working on an internet radio station and my thought was we'll see if this actually happens. Well he pulled it off and it's here and it's called K-Love Pop Radio. But being the skeptical person that I am, I'm like, is this actually doing what they're saying it's doing? Before you say anything though, they didn't ask me to make this video. I'm just doing it and they have no idea that I'm doing this. So I'm going to listen to it for a whole week and they don't know and I'm gonna give my review. And you know what, Steve, I'm gonna try to talk with Steve. I've sent the beacon out to Steve and uh, I have a feeling he'll say yes. I think he will. Day two happened and it's fine. I feel like I am hearing a decent mix of things, but it's still doing a lot of repeating. I'm just not exactly sure why it's repeating. This feels like it could go a couple of different ways. Steve has agreed to talk to me and uh, go on the video. So I guess we're gonna get some questions answered. What do you know, Steve Shore the man behind the playlisting, the man behind this new radio. Thanks for joining me, man, because uh, hey, you're welcome. you could have quickly hopped on this call and been like, here's a cease and desist, Jonathan. We're going to stop this guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> about that. <laughs> oh, no, not the pocket. papers. No. <laughs> no, I can't believe they made a pocket-sized cease and desist. You've worked in radio for how long, first of all? Uh, I've, I've been doing radio, if you don't count college radio, professionally I've been doing radio since 2002. Started very entry level, worked my way up. I was at a different radio station group for 21 years uh, as the assistant program director, and the music director, eventually program director, and then a year and a half ago, came over to Caleb because I had the opportunity to do things like Caleb Pop, which really excited me. I, like I said, I love Christian AC radio but I was really excited to be able to work on things that help reach and encourage other people. You and I have been in some form of communication now for almost a year. Yeah, ever since your first video when it came out, I think I hit you up that weekend. Yeah. And, and I think you're probably worried, uh oh, this guy from Caleb's going to see something negative. And so I'm like, I loved it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I kind of want to know when the video last year came out, what was the vibe around the Caleb? stations I, I think most of us enjoyed it now i don't know if publicly we're going around and saying that. well of course yeah <laughs> but overall a lot of the criticisms there were valid i wouldn't say they all were but most of them were very valid and most That's and fair. most of them are just how how radio works i get into everything that was wrong now i can't remember it was a year ago yeah but the a lot of it was the we get it, and that's why most normal people don't listen to one radio station 24-7, so their experience uh, isn't quite yeah. the same. Looking back on it, the insanity of, of me listening to the sheer amount of yeah. daily radio play of one station, of one thing, is not like the normal base level experiment, <laughs> you know? No, the, the average person listens to the radio, it depends on the radio station, but let's say at most a couple hours a week. You know, you design radio stations to reach those people, the majority of listeners, and you want to play the best songs or their favorite songs every time they tune in, if at all possible. So that's why you get a lot of the repetition on radio. That's, that's, how, that's just how radio was made, but it annoys any super fans who listen all the time, but you, you can't serve both the super fan and a wider audience. I didn't really contemplate that side of it. Most radio stations have seven or eight categories of songs, at least. You have what's called currents, 
Those would be your newer songs on the station. Once they're out of the while and the ones that are successful, they go to a, what's usually called a medium category. And the ones that do really well, those go into heavy. And those heavies are the ones on most stations you're hearing every two to four hours, depending on the station. A general rule for radio, and we've seen it in lots and lots of research, the more unfamiliar a song is, the less people like it. Now there's mm. music heads like me, a music head that like, I, I think I've talked to you enough to know that you're yeah. a music head. We like new music. We want to hear different sounds, everything. Normal, everyday, average people, they want to hear the songs they know and they love. So you slowly introduce songs in, you surround them by their favorite songs until they love them, and then all of a sudden it becomes their new favorite. Normal. We are not normal. We're not the normal, normal people. <laughs> We're not normal. Normal people uh, take time to warm up to most songs. There's always exceptions, yeah. but overall, it takes time. With that, though, comes a challenge, which is you've just started Caleb Pop Radio. Yeah. And you have collectively blown the minds of all of us that are like in the independent music space because you have not only played our music, but you're playing it alongside like songs from popular artists that like I've never heard before. When you yeah. first did the video, I wrote you and said, hey, guess what? I hear what you're saying. You're, you're saying we're not playing a lot. Well, I've got this playlist I just had started, I think, on yeah. Spotify at that point called Fresh Sounds. You know, highlight music we don't usually play on the radio. Because I, I believe in that. I believe there's a need to highlight it. And I'd even argue right now, some of the best music in Christian music is being made actually by indie artists. There's still great stuff made by the labels. I'm not yeah. even trying to claim there isn't. But there's also amazing music being made by indie artists that hardly anyone know about. So I'm like, how can I help expose it? You know, I've I've noticed repetition, but if my thoughts are correct, it's because there's not this huge massive list yet it's something that's growing right. and shifting it's on the repetitions to help familiarize those i can't do that to every song in the library because if you did that then i mean then it would be a really small library i try to i try to make it deep enough that even though you'll hear repetition on some of the newest hottest songs some of the stuff that's just even a little bit older i'm treating it as if the radio stations existed for months like your songs the stuff's in there that's not brand new so they're not playing as heavy because right station had launched six months ago we've been playing at those heavy spots yeah totally but if yeah. you listened all day yeah you'd hear there's a handful of songs you'd hear three or four times but you'd also get hear a nice mix of all this other music that's existing through I've combined day three and four because there's not much difference between the two days. I do feel like I'm going a little bit crazy because once again, I'm listening to things on a loop, but I feel like I can understand it a little bit more, at least this time around. <laughs> but here on day four, I'm also really thinking about the fact that it's pretty much all pop. Notice I said pretty much because there's also some alternative playing. It's, it's not as much as kind of the beats that we're finding in pop. I'm sure Steve has an answer for this too. This is everything they tell you not to do with a radio station. It's the <laughs> be as unfamiliar as possible. Um, but sometimes when it's a format that hasn't really existed much in Christian music, there's very few people doing anything like this at all in Christian music right now. Yeah. You just ha it has to take time. And yeah, at first I expect it to be maybe a smaller audience, but that audience, as they get to know the songs, more will grow. I think Force Frank is actually right now playing the heaviest on there, but Force Frank yeah. is also the biggest thing in Christian music. But I couldn't, I couldn't build a station that sounds like this without doing a lot of unfamiliar music. And I think long term it will pay off. And I think short term, there's enough people who've been waiting for something different. And so how can we start to do things that reach other people? And so pop for me is kind of that example. It helps that I'm a pop fan and an alternative fan. Like in many ways, this station is songs that Steve likes, which is not how you're supposed to set up radio stations either. You're uh -oh. telling me that they didn't pass the name K Love Steve as like this no. station? That's I mean, I suggested man. it. I mean, you got you, Jack you FM. Have... Why can't we have Steve <laughs> FM? What are you like looking for for K Love Pop? Almost every Friday, I spend pretty much all morning listening through every new Christian music playlist I could find. And I try to find ones for my playlist. I've got several playlists now on Apple Music and Spotify. But then I start listening to those playlists a lot and the songs that kind of bubble to the top for me on those right now. But a lot of it's music discovery. It's me going out and finding stuff that I think this fits the sound of the station. I was a little torn being called pop. How much alternative, how much yeah. pop. It's, the station's very poppy, but there's a point where I sit there and think, okay, 
can I get away with playing a Jonathan Allen Wright next to <laughs> yeah, a Forrest yeah. Frank? If you even look at like Chris Rensma, I don't know if you know Chris yeah. Rensma at all. And I thought, well, if he can play, if he can be that big alongside these other artists that are big, I feel like I can combine them. If you listen to mainstream top 40 radio, you have your Benson Boone, who doesn't sound like yep. anything else, but works. I thought, I'm going to try it and see how it works. And I think it sounds great. I think combining that really poppy beat driven sound with some guitar driven more guitar driven alternative stuff actually works fine and it gets and it keeps it from the station from just sounding one thing the whole time so you don't get too many beat songs or too many guitar songs in a row you'll get some in a row but not so yeah i want to make sure when you're listening it's a journey that was one thing i was noticing is that you'd have some that really felt like you know pop you know you'd have like a, yeah. a really poppy torn wells song and then you'd have like all of a sudden, right after that, you might get Gable Price. You know, my thought too is when my first video came out, of course, I was just, I, I didn't know everything that was going to transpire because of this and, right. and like and the communication you and I would have or that I would be playing on there. And I've already reiterated in the video, like, Caleb's not paying me, you're not paying me to make this right. second video. It's purely out of curiosity. There has been some movement in that way. Mm -hmm is like yeah. so encouraging for someone my age and someone who's making music because it's like, man, like this is something that feels geared towards us. I feel like that explanation makes sense because you know, at the end of the day, you're just trying to figure out how to get a song in front of the most people and how to get people to stay. And in reality, we can't really get inside of people's heads as much as we think we can sometimes. All right, day five is coming up. Hey, it's interesting we're talking about radio and music because I have a new album out. That's right. I have an album out called Stories. It is streaming everywhere. I have had an amazing time making it. You can go check it out on my other YouTube channel, Jonathan Allen Wright Music, or stream it anywhere that you have streaming. All right, back to the normal video. Okay, it's, it's day five now. I do feel like I'm going a little bit crazy, but I appreciate them making a station and a lot of work goes into it. So it seems like Steve does a lot. What does it take for you to be like, hey, Caleb, I need a new station? I knew we had a goal of launching so many new stations this year because that's kind of my job. My, my actual title right now is Music Platform Program Manager. I manage all of our streaming stations that aren't Caleb and Air One. So that's, we have all these decades, 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. We have a Air, I just relaunched, it was called Birthday Blend, but it's now called Caleb Eras. Which that's is a mix of cool. the best songs from 90s or a little bit 80s through today. Uh, actually, on the Air One side of things, we have a Spanish worship station. There's more things coming uh, that I can't talk about. The <laughs> But when we decide which ones to pick, the, this is the format I've been most personally passionate about launching. The need is a bigger pop alternative. The natural place to go right now, if you're doing a hotter station, honestly, is hip hop. But there are some stations doing a great job. I'll give a shout out to Boost FM in St. Louis. I would like to do what I call the flip side of that. Like mm -hmm. They're doing the top 40-ish style hip hop, but no one's really, or not many people are doing anything that's top 40 style pop. And actually the approval part was easy. I actually thought we were gonna launch this a little bit earlier this year, but thanks to just delays and honestly we're in the middle of moving into a new building. There's lots of things that happened that just slowed things down, but it was okay because it gave me more time to develop it and yeah, I think the station's better now than it would have been a few months ago because it gave me a chance to really dig in deep and try to try to make it the best possible. Okay, day six and seven together. You know, I, I did feel like there's been a lot of repeating and a lot of things going on that I had a lot of criticism to say about on the last Caleb video. However, this time I do feel like I'm going into it with a better idea of function. One really interesting conversation that Steve and I had was around radio really being more of like a resourcing platform. So with the kind of changing structure and culture around music, because streaming digital downloads showed up on the map and radio obviously took some impact from that. How do you view like playlisting? Yeah, I actually think, and you will get a different answer from a lot of people on radio on this. I don't consider playlisting the enemy. I, I will say, I think some people on radio think of it that way because it's, 
competing for listeners' ears. And it's true. This playlist has existed. Fewer people listen to the radio. Uh, but I think the key with playlisting is you can enhance what you do. I can do stuff in playlisting I can't do on the radio. I can make a playlist that is for people struggling with anxiety, and you can have you know 30 songs on there dealing with that. Or on the radio, we have those songs mixed in, but they're not all the nice easy to listen to yeah. quick package of songs. And then it's also has given me the opportunity to be able to do things like the Fresh Sounds playlist where I feature music we're probably never gonna play on the radio. Yeah. But it's stuff I think is worth people listening to. I try to update it every single week. I'm putting, I don't know, 15 to 20 songs on there a week at least. It, I consider playlisting something that can go hand in hand if you do it right and can enhance our brand and make it something where we can uh, offer more opportunities for people to listen. Yeah. Well, it, and it almost becomes that Caleb is like a resource hub at that point. Right. Because yeah. rather than just here's this one thing that we have and kind of this rotating stuff going on, suddenly you're like, actually, here's a resource that you can use on your own time, curate and put together for you. On the reverse side of that, the, the average consumer that is using playlists and loves playlists, they shouldn't see radio as the enemy either right. it's just serving a different function so follow so follow all my playlists uh look for caleb on spotify or on apple music and you'll see uh, i think i don't know how many playlists i'm looking now 29 different playlists something like that follow it on, on spotify especially if you find one you like so i know that this is a playlist i should focus more on uh, if you're apple music follow them too i don't necessarily see as many numbers there because of how the two platforms differ there's probably something there that might speak to you or if you're looking for things that might speak to you in a certain situation in life a few of those right now i have more of those coming soon i'll put the profile link for the spotify in in the description of my yeah. video as well as the apple awesome. music so i guess thinking on my last day of doing it I have a better understanding of K-Love, at least as a whole. Am I going to listen to K-Love radio specifically really ever again? No. Am I going to listen to K-Love pop? Yes. And the reason I think that we should all listen to K-Love pop is we're trying to help them shift the needle a little bit over. Since everything is based on demand and based on listenership, if we really want to see the fruit of a new channel and a new radio, then we should at least support it. Once again, this is not something they are paying me to say. This is not even something that I'm getting something out of. I'm just saying this because I fully believe that we should give them a shot. Is it mostly pop radio? Yeah. Am I a pop music fan? Not really. But if they start seeing that people are paying attention and that they're listening to independent artists and that they are downloading the app and actually listening to things, then amazing. Not only that, but if they see that we're following the playlists and we're listening to the playlists that they've put together that are around really niche markets then they'll probably see that there's a demand for that too so basically what i'm saying is i think we should give caleb a shot what a shift a year has made on this but i think that steve makes some really good points and conversations with other people that i've had have made some really good points and so i'm gonna let steve close us out to tell us how we can help them yeah, da download our app go to the website listen to the station if you listen to 90s and in, in uh when you were younger, if you're older like I am, uh, I think our 90s channel, I'm biased because I program it, is the best mix of Christian music from the 90s that you can find. You'll hear the radio songs, like you're still gonna get your butterfly kisses and <laughs> your basics of life yes, and the yeah. great adventure in the 90s. But you'll also hear a little of the Supertones, a little of Five Iron Frenzy on there. Now we're talking. From the 2000s, yeah. you'll hear Reliant K. Hopefully others enjoy them as much as I do. I wasn't aware of how much work goes into the internet radio portion of this. Yeah. I, I just wanna encourage the people that are watching this that that is such a cool way to discover music i mean i i had been aware of chase wagner's music but never listened to him and then one of his songs came on the other day and i'm like dang dude like i, I am upset he has two songs that were released this summer. they're both playing on caleb pop and i am obsessed with both of them i'm like phenomenal. i don't know what these are <laughs> i don't know where they came from they don't sound like anything else we have right now in christian music in the app you have ways of like favoriting songs you guys are doing so much steep you're doing so much for like the indie artists but also just in resourcing different genres different tastes in music i'm i'm so excited we get to to talk and that we get to text and uh you know that you've played my yeah. music which i really really appreciate as well so um thanks for being here so <laughs>
I'm bad at ending things. This is why I'm not a radio host, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I hope you had a good time. I hope that it uh, educated you some. And thanks to Steve for being in the video. I'm going to leave some links to the app and to some of the playlists that I think are really interesting. You should go follow them. I'm also going to leave a link to my new album. Please take a listen to it. I'm super excited that it's out. Special thanks to my council of Hanks once again for allowing me to do this and supporting me and giving me input into videos like this. If you want to take part in that, go ahead and do it. It's amazing. We're having a lot of fun over there. All right. I'll catch you in the next video soon.